Not long ago, investors wanted nothing to do with slow and steady dividend stocks. The economy was roaring, interest rates were rising, and so these defensive stocks were very much out of favor in the Wall Street fashion show, especially utilities. Now, though, people are worried about a worldwide slowdown, and long-term interest rates have pulled back substantially from their highs. So is it time to get some utility exposure? Take Entergy, which has begun to bounce in recent weeks. In fact, they did a big secondary offering to clean up their balance sheet a little bit over two weeks ago, and if you got in this deal, you're up a quick five bucks. Now, Energy has a big power generation, transmission, and distribution business down in the deep south, along with a sizable wholesale power generation business, including some nukes, and the stock sports a juicy 4.44% yield. Just yesterday, Energy held an M- Analyst day in New York City, try to draw up a little extra interest here and get some renewed support. What did the company tell them? Well, let's take a closer look with Leo Donaldi. He's the chairman and CEO of Entergy. And find out what his company's doing, where it's headed. Mr. Donaldi, welcome back to Mad Money. Good to see you, Leo. Have a seat. Good to see you. All right, so what was the message that you gave to people? Because obviously it's being well received and the stock is really moving here. Well, basically what we're telling them is that the, the quest we've been on for the last several years to get to basics, to grow our utility business is on track. Right. We've got a significant amount of investment that we can do in the Gulf South. We're upgrading the technology across our entire fleet in the generating fleet, transmission, and distribution system. And largely we have regulatory approval to move forward with all of the projects that we're building right now. Those should help us grow our business for our customers. They create a better environmental footprint, lower production costs, but at the same point in time, it's the driver of earnings growth. Well, in the presentation, which is terrific, I got five big plants coming, uh, uh, and it seemed to me that your area has got to be one, with all the building and those low costs for natural gas and oil, you must be one of the biggest boom areas in the country. It is. We've got tremendous industrial growth that we've had over the last decade almost. Ever since the financial crisis, we've had at least 4% compound annual growth rate in our top line sales to industrial customers. We've got ethane crackers, we've got LNG export terminals, new steel mills that have come online, and we continue to see favorable economics in the commodity markets, low electricity prices right. provided by us, low natural gas prices, and actually that ratio of oil to natural gas is important in some of those export-minded right companies that are making natural gas-based products in the Gulf South, and they're competing overseas with oil-based kind of Right. Well, you do have a chart. The chart shows you're the lowest cost for low customer rates there is. Yes. Yeah, we have been out of the investor-owned utility sector. We have been the lowest cost for a couple of years in a row. That's a combination of the new assets that we're putting in place all run more efficiently, so they burn a lot less natural gas, right. they have less emissions, so that's a lower production cost for our customers. We've been very good about keeping a lid on our costs, right. like a lot of companies are, and that low natural gas price has helped, plus the industrial growth. Those new plants, we're spreading our rate levels over a larger right. number of megawatt hours, and these are big facilities. As you know, you've been down there. Oh, my God, it's They're cool. multi-billion it's dollar just... projects that use a lot of electricity. No, it, but it, it, there's just, you have a lot of green field construction more than any other part of the country. They all are natural users of your new yes. Um, energy. Yes, and one of the benefits of having those low prices that a lot of companies that would go into a region and generate electricity themselves co-generate, they right. don't in our service territory because our price point is so low. Okay, can you explain to me uh, your nuclear strategy, Because it, it, or explain to our viewers, because it is a little difficult to understand. Sure, it's, and I wouldn't think of it as a nuclear strategy. Okay. It's really a merchant power strategy. Yes, So yes. it just so happens that a number of our nuclear plants are in merchant markets. Those are restructured markets where it's a competitive environment, and the price of power is set on a minute-by-minute basis based on the, the what's the marginal unit of, of power at that point in time. Uh, it's just not price competitive in those markets for us to operate those plants. And so we're having to shut those down. So the technology is solid. The plants are well run. We have great employees at those plants. It's just a fact that economics um, say we would lose hundreds of millions of dollars by continuing to operate them. So we've got an orderly shutdown of those plants. We've eliminated a lot of the risk by pre-selling a lot of the output from them. So to strip the volatility out of the top mm-hmm. line got the operations that we're, we're making sure that we continue to operate to excellence all the way to the shutdown. And the other thing we've done is we've actually taken a position where the employees at those plants, they're primarily in New York, Massachusetts, right. Vermont, and Michigan, that the employees at those plants, we're going to try to find them jobs at our plants and other areas in the uh, Gulf cool. South because of that business is growing so fast. All right. Now, uh, 10% legacy coal. Uh, huge uh, growing renewables. Uh, yes. President likes coal. Uh, yeah. A lot of P 
people, especially younger people, like renewables. Yeah. Uh, which can you add more coal, or is that just something that's we're not, we're not going to be? It's not economic for us to add more coal. The, the new natural gas plants are so efficient and so low cost, and the natural gas we're, plants we're building, the big ones, St. Charles, Lake Charles, Montgomery County, those are all identical facilities, one year apart. That was all done on purpose to manage the risk around those, but they're so efficient and so low cost that coal can't compete with those. Got it. They're also a much better environmental outcome. So if you look at our fleet, we are one of the cleanest fleets in the United States from an emissions standpoint. A significant amount of nuclear power right. in our Gulf South utilities, mm -hmm. and those aren't going anywhere. Right. The new natural gas plants are 40% cleaner in terms of CO2 wow. emissions than the ones they replace. A growing renewable base as well will keep us on that track to actually continue to improve. You know, we were the first utility in the United States to voluntarily limit our greenhouse gas emissions back in 2001. And we set those at our 2000 levels. And then in 2011, we upped that to 20% below our 2000 levels. And we've continued to beat that all Well, along. I'm glad you brought that up because we have younger viewers who watch want that more than yeah. anything. Yeah. Well, you've done a great job, Leo. That's Leo Donaldi, the chairman and CEO of Energy Corp, low cost producer and one of the fastest growers. That's how you make money in utilities. Mad Money's back after the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.